In today's episode, we talk about how we grew up in our Asian families, and we also talk about the aspects of heritage that we cherish and want to pass on to our future generations. We also talk about travel, our love for it, and our disdain for it. So today I thought that we could talk about heritage. I think that that's such a huge theme for uh, our generation now in terms of how they identify um, what their roots are, um, especially in recent years with like AAPI being more prevalent. So what I want to know today is growing up, how Asian was your family? Oh. <laughs> like what are the Asian things that like we know of, like stereotypes, et cetera, and like did your family follow it? Um, for example, I know like my family, like surprisingly so we're not very asian like we don't eat asian food like when we go out it's always like we just go to eat american food on holidays like i don't even know what the moon festival is i don't know the meaning of it and when i ask my parents they don't even know and when we do chinese new year we just do the banquet like mm-hmm. but there's some people that like do the full thing you know of like the shoes or whatever sorry i'm like the worst but <laughs> yeah. you, you know like those like kinds the full, of things. like multiple days yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing. <laughs> I mean, they're kind of Asian with the, uh, if we go to a buffet, it's like no carbs. You know, you don't get to have rice. You don't get to have chow mein. You don't have, get to have fried rice. <laughs> Only get like the meat and seafood. Is yeah. that a thing? Yeah, I didn't know it's that like, it's the most. It's the oh. most like bang for your buck. Oh, right? I see. Yeah, like, it's like, like when you go to yeah. Vegas and you only eat the king crab. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I feel like that. Yeah, that's, that's all like you're allowed to eat. That's pretty Asian. At least like from just right. hearing the question, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Okay, yeah. So yeah. I think what else is like really Asian? <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. It, it's kind of, that's a good question because I think growing up, I never thought my family was very Asian. But then later on, I'm like, you know what? I think we're pretty Asian because we eat Asian food pretty often. That's what my mom would cook. Um, and... We would celebrate the Asian holidays, but I don't think we ever did it to the full extent. So I would say we're probably like 50%, 50% Asian. Um, But we would like, my mom would be like, oh, like today is whatever, Lunar New Year. And Mm -hmm. this is what people do on Lunar New Year. And then probably just be like, okay, we're going to eat like this. Or we're going to like, you can play with a lantern, you know, but that was probably about it. But then like, I think later on, I'm like, oh, like at least like. I guess we, like, were Asian because we celebrated these things, but I don't think we ever celebrated to, like, the full extent. Like, oh, like, oh, we were supposed to be eating these other things, and we only ate, like, 50% of the menu. (laughs) So, Um, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, no king crab legs. I definitely resonate with that. You know, there's, like, a strategy to go eating buffets, you know? (laughs) Totally. Yeah, you just skip one whole section. Yeah. (laughs) Not a lot to fill up here. (laughs) So it sounds like for all of us, like, uh, there are traditions or, like, holidays that we celebrate, but we don't really go too deep into it in our personal families. Mm -hmm. Uh, Are you – did you guys, like – so – carrying over to like when you got married right like sometimes you know when you get married like your the cultural things to do pop up out of nowhere you're like what like did you guys have to do tea ceremonies and do all of that so you know that's such a funny question because i think growing up like i said i didn't think we were that asian but you know when i got married i was like whoa we asian you know and 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 i don't know if it's just because like they wanted to uphold the traditions or it was just like because this is just such a special event. But yes, I had to do the tea ceremony. Although I think it wasn't to the extent like everybody had to be invited. So we actually only did it with my parents and not the extended relatives. Um, but like my mom had this thing where she like wanted us to like meet like both sides of the family and the relatives. And I definitely get the sentiment of that. But I like didn't know it was like a thing, you know, in Asian culture that like this was like respect, you know. And a lot of things too. It's like, oh, like great uncle has to sit at this table table number one and i was like the why you know like it's a respect thing you know and it's like part of like our culture and it was like a lot of that stuff i was like well like okay i guess so but i like did not expect that to come up neither of our families did i wonder if it's like because once christianity got introduced into like the family line it just kind of goes out the window but we asked both sides like hey do you want us to do a tea ceremony and it both sides like what's that yeah we're like, what's that? We're like what like <laughs> shouldn't you know yeah. we're doing this because it's like i mean we didn't do it but it's like oh we just assumed yeah they would know like no yeah. no idea no need to do that and we're like okay but then it was just oh make sure you invite x y and z mm. down the list of your family members that are all in asia I'm like but they're not coming no no, no you have to invite them yes just, so they know yeah yeah i think my family was the same where when i when i got married too i was like do we want to do this so like we don't know what it is no we don't need to do it <laughs> but but kind of the same thing where like there are other like asian traditions or just mannerisms i guess or yeah. levels of respect that kind of come through right yeah yeah 
What are um, some of the traditions that you feel like uh, you like about our culture, like in terms of like the teachings that maybe we had mm -hmm. uh, growing up or just things that you feel like, hey, like in hindsight, that was a good thing to like grow up with in terms of structure or just thought? Yeah. I think there's like the whole, I think most people always talk about it when it's like East versus West. Mm -hmm. East is very communal focus. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think there's an explicit thing I can remember, but there's just different things like, oh, be considerate of these things. Or, I mean, yeah, coming on airplanes, like, oh, don't kick the chair in front of you. Or, like, <laughs> try to move out of the way if, like, adults are walking because then you're going to get, like, run over because mm -hmm. you're smaller. Or just little things that it's like, oh, yeah, this makes sense now looking back to be aware of these things. And then especially as you interact with more and more people, you realize that not everyone shares the same awareness for these specific items mm -hmm. and you just kind of question like oh like how come that happened and it's just a lot of times just because they were never taught that yeah and told to hey look out for these things yeah well, that's really true um i think something i do appreciate about the asian culture is the fact that it i mean the whole honoring thing um and i think that especially i feel like in today's society and I don't know if it's just my perspective, but I feel like that lacks a lot of just like basic respect and honoring somebody for just being that person, you know, or the role of, you know, in their, of, of that person in your life. Um, and I think just that concept is just like not even taught or really like, I guess, praised to like these days. It's not like something that's like positive. Um, and so I think that aspect, I really do appreciate. I think especially as a parent now, I definitely see the value in teaching my children honor and respect um, and valuing like people older or younger, you know. Um, and I think also like I think especially coming from a communal culture, um, like at least I feel like a lot of times the older people are kind of like disregarded because they're elderly or like, you know, they're less use, you know, in society. They're not as productive or effective, you know because their, their prime is gone. But I really feel like in, at least in Asian culture, we value elderly people a lot. And I think as I grow older, I'm like, man, there's a lot of wisdom. There's a lot of like value in like, just because you're not, you know, as effective or as fast as the younger people are. But there's a lot of experience. And like, I think as a person that's getting older now, I'm like, man, like experience is really something that like, is like, you, you can't pay money for, you know, you have to just, like that is in, like just so much value in that. Um, and so, yeah, I really appreciate that about our culture. Yeah. I think the um, honor and respect that you touched on, I really resonate with that too. Cause mm -hmm. I do think that there is kind of a lack of mm -hmm. currently um, and just being able to like have decorum, like in yeah. public situations and such. So I think that's something that um, I also think is important. I also think that like the work ethic that we're taught yeah. is important too. I feel like, uh, yeah, I don't know if, if now it's it's a little bit less, mm -hmm. but I think work ethic is something that actually stays with you uh, for your whole life. And mm -hmm. it, you know, teaches you resilience and, yeah. um, you know, sets you up for success in a way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What are some of the things that um, you feel like you want to carry forward to, like, say, your legacy or your family? Like, I think mm -hmm. for me, one of the things that I think was a huge gift is just being able to speak Mandarin. Mm. And I think one of the things I know that I don't want to do if I have children in the future, send them to Chinese school, not mm. because I don't want them to learn, but I just look at all my friends who went to Chinese school and they like retained zero. But like, so that's something that I think about. It's like, how do like, say we like continue yeah. to pass that down to our future families? Mm -hmm. If, I mean, I think I speak pretty good Mandarin. I don't know about other people, but if like you don't, if you can't speak Mandarin well, how do you pass that on to your kids, you yeah. know? Or what are some of the things that you feel like you want to pass on? Well, I mean, if we want to talk about Mandarin specifically, I'm like, I feel like that'll be really hard. Yeah. Because it's, I think my Mandarin was able to stay at a certain level because my parents forced us to speak Mandarin at home. Mm. But then I don't foresee me doing that with whatever potential kids down the road. Like, hey, we're going to speak Mandarin. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. But I can only speak. <laughs> half as well so you get 25 percent of like whatever scale and so that i don't know how we would pass it on either because i also yeah did not have the greatest experience with chinese school it's like oh whatever i don't mm -hmm. want to try here mm -hmm. so 
I highly doubt that'll stay with the kids as well. So I'm not sure what our approach is for that. Any ideas? Um, you know, that's really funny because this is actually something that I've been thinking about really actively. So I send my, my daughter now to a bilingual preschool and they teach mm. her Mandarin supposedly. <laughs> um, and it's funny cause my husband and I, like we pretty much just speak English, even though we both like mm -hmm. speak Cantonese at home, but that was actually something really intentionally. I wanted, I think I do want my kids to learn Mandarin and I do want them to learn as many. I want to expose them at least to as many languages. Chinese school, I'm not sure. I haven't answered that question yet because, you know, it's Chinese school. But, you know, I think with any language, they're going to have to go through some sort of education process to, like, understand and learn a language fully. Um, but, yeah, I actually really – I wish my Mandarin or my Cantonese was better, actually. And I wish that I could fluently teach my children that um, and, and have them learn another language. Like, that's something that I feel like um, – and we can talk about this later too, just like traveling like the world. I see it's it's pretty cool. Like if you know multiple languages and you have a lot more, I don't know, enjoyment when you go to those different places. Um, and I think it also just, I think with language comes a lot of culture too. And so it also expands your um, curiosity about cultures um, in the world and maybe just your worldview as well. Um, but you know what? That's something I haven't quite sifted through yet either. Um, I think it's just like a very early thought. I'm like, you know what? Cool. They teach you Mandarin. I don't really speak good Mandarin. So this is probably a win, at least for now. But she's she's really little. So we have a long way to go still. There's a part of me where I'm thinking like, oh, maybe if they do go to Chinese school and they have their workbooks, like I will just learn alongside with them. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, because then if they end up coming and they're like, oh, how do I do this? And I'm like, I have to learn it in order to teach. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I don't know. Like, just follow that. <laughs> like, follow That's those really strokes funny. or whatever. Did you all go to Chinese school? Did you both Yeah. have to go through the whole so thing? So I never went to Chinese school. And then I felt so left out because people have like their Chinese school Saturday friends yeah. you know, that you know from different schools oh. and cities, right? And yeah. I just felt like I was so isolated. So finally, I think when I was in fourth grade, I like had... I tagged along, like I signed up for a quarter and I tagged along with another church person to yeah. go to Chinese school with them. But I was like in the kindergarten class, you know, when they're all already in the, whatever grades they're in, yeah. you know? And so that was like super counterintuitive. But, yeah. um, so I, I quit after, I don't even think I finished the full thing. Like right. it was a month. Right. But I think for me, like I was surrounded by the language. Like mm -hmm. my grandparents lived with me when, um, you know, I was growing up. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually super, super fluent. I just am illiterate. Right. So I did make the effort in college <laughs> to go and learn Chinese. Oh. Um, and I thought this is going to be a breeze because I speak so fluently and I understand. Yeah. It was the hardest thing I ever did in my life. And I have to also say, I absolutely dropped out of that class. <laughs> there are people that were like not Asian that were doing so much better with, than me. Uh. I'm like, I for cannot for the life of me remember all the strokes. Yeah. And like, how does this like phonetically make sense? It doesn't. Yeah. And so I remember even for like our first like real assignment, I like Back then, like it's fax machine, right? I like yeah. called my mom. I said, these are the words we learned in Chinese school. Can you fax me the essay yeah. that, you know, I want you to write <laughs> yeah. for me that only uses the vocab we learned in <laughs> yeah. school? And she did that. Yeah. I mean, God bless my mom. Yeah. But like, that was the end of it. Yeah. And I'm just like, wow, this is so hard. hard. Yeah. 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 No, I was there. Too, I <laughs> that sounds terrible. Yeah. I think sixth grade. I don't even know how I got that far. Wow, you went through Chinese school for six till sixth grade. Yeah, but I don't know how I got that far. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> that's that's kind of a long time. Yeah, I think it was just one of those things it where, through. yeah, it's just like I don't think I ever did any of the homework assignments, and then mm -hmm. my mom would just be like, <laughs> su super embarrassed bringing me on Saturday. She's like, "You didn't do it again," or like whatever, so or like we're like out, so we're like outside the room, and she's like trying to get me to fill out the like <laughs> answers before we walk in, so at least it looks like I did something. And yeah, I think by yeah, because then fourth, starting fourth grade, we were in Florida, but there was still a Chinese school that we went to. But yeah, I don't, I don't remember doing anything. I just remember there was one nerd in that class that like always came prepared, knew all the answers. And I was like, dude, what a loser! Like, why are you trying so hard? I'm like, God bless him, but I wonder where he's at with all of that now. I don't know. <laughs> he's probably some like Chinese like professor somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> But I mean, that's my mentality with it. I'm like, are you serious? Like, we have to go another day of school and the whole week I'm doing, quote unquote, normal school homework. 
So it's not like this is the first thing I think about. And then, of course, my mom's like, no, you gotta like go practice your musical instruments and whatever. Like, I don't got time for Chinese school. It's the last thing on my list. <laughs> okay, yeah. overachiever Samuel Shaw here. <laughs> okay, you act like you weren't forced to play instruments either. I know, I was definitely forced to play <laughs> instruments. I would like protest. I feel like that's another part of like the culture. Like, yeah. I feel like all my Asian friends have definitely either learned, I think it's like a well-known joke, right? Either learn piano or violin. Mm -hmm. Those are the starter instruments. And then if you get more advanced, you like take on other things, yeah. right? And like, if like you're a an second overachiever. Instrument. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that, that's like starting to be overachiever status, you know? Um, but yeah, I definitely learned piano and I dreaded it. Like I hated it. Um, I would like protest and like just take, I would literally like crawl up on the piano bench and take a nap. <laughs> because my mom would she would make this role where I would have to sit there for an hour to practice piano and now that I look back at it and as a parent I'm like man I wasted so yeah. much money like I was like I don't even know why my mom kept me in those lessons because I would not be paying for my kid now if I had to like dish out all that money for nothing you know well how long did you have lessons for I took it all the way till the end you know how like you have those like tests that you right. have to take I just I completed it and I don't even wow. know uh, God's mercy I literally like you're like you? a master status. But I'm not, though. <laughs> but now I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, like, struggling on the piano, you know, which is kind of sad because I think if you don't play it, you lose it. But it was, like, did, and did you guys have to do, like, music theory? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That was, like, the hardest thing ever. Yes. I, like, didn't even know how I passed, like, barely, you know? <laughs> I was, like, I don't know what this note is. I don't know what arpeggios are, you yeah. know? Like, and the minor, the majors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, like, I, mean, it didn't like, I don't care. It didn't help that like my mom was the teacher and right. I'm like, she's like super. Wow. Like, well, See, she's like, she got her doctors in like piano or whatever. Wow. Wait, so did you make, did, do you know how to play piano? Yeah, a little bit, but. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Wow. But my, no, my mentality was just Couldn't like, you only want us to play because you play. So mm. I don't want to mm -hmm. play. And then, but she never <laughs> kept us like on the, at least me and my brother on the little levels. Yeah. scale whatever so we just kind of just played whatever she just made us play songs like okay you gotta master song then go to like this next one go to this next one and then finally we got out of it because she's like all right i'll stop teaching you but you have to like go pick up another instrument and so at this point we were both playing piano and violin and then <laughs> uh tim picked up cello i picked up saxophone and she's like okay you guys can just play those instruments and then that was the only reason we stopped. But yeah, what a waste of time. <laughs> if we gave you a saxophone today, could you play a song? I mean, probably. I don't know. It's not that hard. Depends on oh, the, my bad. The the I, I mean, if you gave me a saxophone, I would not know how to play that. Yeah, but you've never played, right? <laughs> That's like, true. I feel That's like, true. Like... So what, okay, what are the instruments you've... you've so saxophone, violin, and piano. So like official lessons. Yeah, so piano, violin, saxophone. That's okay. it. Okay. Yeah, but then because of that, like, whatever rough fundamentals I had, like, it helped me pick up guitar. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, in terms of, like, music theory and whatever, I, my mom never really hammered down on that yeah. stuff. And that the only way she would get to practice, because it's like, I don't know, some person would give us a birthday or Christmas present. Oh. And then she's like, oh, you can't open it until you, like, practice <laughs> piano X amount of times. And then, of course, we're super like diligent. Like a hostage situation. Yeah, yeah, hostage situation. And then... <laughs> It's wild because now when I see my mom interact with other kids, like younger kids, it's all bribes. And then <laughs> the more I think about it, I'm like, dude, my whole childhood was bribes. So like I am very incentivized by incentives. Yes. But like if there's no incentives and there's no carrot at the end of the stick, I'm not doing anything. Thank you for sure because now I know how to motivate you, Sam. <laughs> Sam, I'll buy you candy. Yeah, something like that. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> that was the only way we practiced anything. Right. And so I definitely think it like messed up my innate work ethic because my <laughs> intrinsic motivation is very weak. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Did you take piano lessons? Uh, yeah, I took piano lessons, kind of like Iris, like yeah. all the way through level 10, did all the music theory. I also took flute nice. um, and I also did all the way to the top. There used to be also be like these uh, these tests you take. I wow. can't remember. Is it CMPs now? Mm -hmm. I don't even remember what it's called. Um, I was... And I loved it. I was a, you know, section leader of marching band. I'm like very proud wow. of that. I don't care how dorky it sounds. I love my time. And I also played for the orchestra when we had, um, when we had uh, like school musicals. Yeah. Like I was like the flute person. Oh. Um, you know, and I, I have to say like, the, I don't keep up with any of it, but I wish, 
there's a part of me that wishes I did because yeah. in my older years, I feel like the things I liked as a kid are resurfacing. Mm-hmm. Like I am such a nerd. I love classical music. Mm-hmm. And if I had the opportunity to play in an adult orchestra as part of like their local ballet production, I would love to do that. That's so But crazy. I did pick up my flute like a couple years ago. I can't do it. And I used to be so good. Yeah. And so I feel like, man, you know. So you still have your flute. I don't know. We, we did a a purge and I'm not sure I still have it now, but I, I, I wish I had it and I wish I kept up because then I could participate in those things. Yeah. That's really cute. So nerdy. Yeah. Um, but what else did your parents, like, I think when I grew up, my parents, like they made me do everything, Mm -hmm. but in a good way, you Mm -hmm. know, I was like, I I did art. I did sports, even though I sucked. I did music, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I did like summer camps. Like, did your parents do the same thing where they really wanted you to kind of be super, super well-rounded or did they kind of let you live your life and be a kid? Yeah. Um, I, I think my parents exposed me to everything too. I mean, th- my parents try so hard to get me into ballet and dance and the arts and like, <clears throat> it just wasn't happening. I remember they sent me to like oil painting class. I think oh, that yeah. was like, that was like a big thing. Was it called know? young at art? Oh my gosh. Yes. yes we were probably in the yes. same oil painting class. Yeah. And we didn't even know. Yes. Uh, yeah. And like everybody in there just was so so good. so good. And I couldn't even get past like the sketch, the picture yeah. before. No, let's not even talk about painting. You know, <laughs> I just couldn't even get past the sketch, the picture. And like, I remember like when the teacher just ended up painting the entire picture for me. So I had something to bring home to show like my parents that like their money was worth it. Was it this like beautiful French woman, French lady that's yes, kind of young? Was, yeah. Yes. She, she did that like for me one time as well. Yeah. I'm like, I just can't get I it. I just can't get it. Yeah. God bless her. Yeah. Like my parents were so proud, but I couldn't even tell them I didn't paint this at all. <laughs> so that did not work out. But yeah, they signed me up for everything. I mean, um, but I, I think the one class I, I remember that I really enjoyed was sewing class. Oh, I yeah. took a sewing class. Yeah, like after school. And that was like the one class I feel like in my childhood that like I did not dread going to after school. You know, I was like, oh, this is fun, you know. Um, but yeah, I instruments, music. The one other class, though, that I did actually like and actually like you were saying, like in my older years, I would actually like to take up. I, I took harp lessons. And wow, I played the harp. Iris? Yeah, like the, I know, it sounds so, I was really dorky. People would probably call me the harp kid. And I was like, yeah, that's a I huge thing to like, it's so, it's around. so, yeah. Yeah. And like, it was kind of a sacrifice on my parents then because they had to lug that thing around with me, you know? So, yeah, and then we had the van, like the carry, Asian yeah. van, you know, yeah. back then to take it around. <laughs> but I would love to re uh, learn the harp again one day and like play. I would love for you to, to, <laughs> to do, do that, that and play for us as well. Yeah. To serenade y'all. Yeah. <laughs> no, because my mom always suggests like, oh, you should like take piano lessons with me again. I'm like, in theory, this sounds great, but I just feel like there's just so much family dynamics that I like don't want to deal with. I'm like, I don't really want to take lessons from you. But yeah, it would be free. And like, you know, it's like from a cost perspective, it makes a lot of sense, but I don't know. Did your parents have aspirations of being a worship band with you? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, they... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if, like, it was specifically with us, but I know, like, my mom really wanted us to lead worship and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As a family and... I don't know if it's that family, but just, oh, like, okay. as individuals or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I think we got pretty lucky because at one point we went back to Orlando in 2017 to, like, do some stuff for the Bread of Life there. So then we ended up leading worship as like a family so mm-hmm. i think they probably got a huge kick out of that yeah it's and a i was dream. just like this is so like lame. we've made it in parenting yeah and yeah. then me and my brother just like playing whatever knows i'm like this is so lame i hate all these chinese songs like <laughs> <laughs> it's so boring to play um i i don't think we were ever good enough for my parents to uh desire to be on the same band as us <laughs> um yeah i mean i did end up i think probably the most useful skill that came out of all my years of piano lessons was actually playing like for worship and like being able to be like oh i know what a c chord is Mm -hmm. um but that but if in terms of classical music i think i've lost most of it (laughs) yeah i mean yeah no so back to the question of like what else did my parents expose Mm -hmm. me to it was mainly my mom because she would drive me to like all these different classes in like kindergarten and first grade i also remember i don't know what art class it was but i also remember clearly working with like pastels and like oil like they're not crayons but they're like i don't know they're like the little chalk thing yeah kind of chalky but Mm -hmm. like it's like in between chalk and oil texture i don't even know what they are uh (laughs) yeah we had like paint stuff and whatever and then i just remember i could not for the life of me like 
fill in color well because I always wanted to get like all the white from the paper out. So I'm just like scribbling to like go <laughs> like cross hatch, whatever, get all the white out. And they're like, no, you can't do that. I'm like, why? But this is like a full on color versus like when you guys just stroke in one direction, there's a lot of white left mm -hmm. on yeah. the paper. Like that looks bad. And they're like, no, this looks bad. And I'm like, no, like you have to get all the white out. Cause I was just so enamored on that. And they're like, uh, they're like, okay, whatever. And then I don't think that didn't last long. And then I remember going to like abacus class. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Got, abacus like, class. like doing stuff like that. What else? I don't know. I think <laughs> like random Chinese poem classes, like in addition to Chinese wow. school. Yeah. Because I think, yeah, at one point, the Chinese school also had electives for us to pick. Wow. And so like a this lot of people. very like intense Chinese school. Yeah, yeah. So like a lot of people would do something fun, right? Like Chinese yo-yo. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, mom, I want to do that. <laughs> like that looks fun. Like they're just screwing around for like an hour. Yeah. And my mom's like, no, you're doing this like Chinese poem class. And I'm like, <laughs> what the freak like, i don't know i don't i have no clue what i'm reciting i'm just like reciting noise you know because it's like it's like super old style yeah. Mandarin, right i would love to see you at a recital for that i don't <laughs> this is I so know. long ago i don't remember any of this but yeah you know so it's like stuff like this where i can't believe they like put us through all this. <laughs> well that's pretty intense chinese poems like I feel like even now, if I heard a Chinese poem, I'd be like, I have no idea what that means. Yeah, because really. it's always it's too like, deep. It's too deep and like, quote unquote, flowery, like in terms of yeah. and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so it's just like through all of this. And it's like, I appreciate it, but maybe as a parent, like, were they just not paying attention to like their return on investment? Like, yo, my son is not getting any better <laughs> at this. They hate this. Like, <laughs> yeah, like maybe let's put him somewhere else, but. I don't know. I can't tell if their dreams were just too big or something. <laughs> so um, what are some of the things that like you do what that the good things, you know, that we have inherited from our culture that we feel like we want to pass on to the next? Like for me, like it's not necessarily a heritage thing or a, a pinpoint thing, but I think my mom's an amazing like Asian cook and mm -hmm. I don't. Like, my sister's really good at cooking Asian food, and I just don't know how to do it. Mm. Like, I just cook American, and I feel like that's something that's on a surface level I do want to, like, learn and just be able to pass on mm. in the future. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Um, I actually, similarly so, I mean, I think I, I got the cooking thing for survival purposes. You know, like, Mom, I have no idea what to do with this tofu. Like, what are the different tofu dishes that you can make out of this? Um, and it's kind of funny cause now with my daughter, I'm like, okay, wash vegetables, which is like the most Asian mom thing you can do. Like wash vegetables five times, make sure there's no dirt in it, you know? <laughs> and so like, and so it's kind of funny, but I'm like, you know, I think cooking, I mean, she's also like really into like wanting to help right now. And I was like, oh, this, like, this is like a good way to kind of like pass something like it maybe it doesn't have to be necessarily asian cooking mm -hmm. right but just like things that like just daily things that you do that like i can pass down you know like people pass down the recipes from generation to generation and maybe there's like maybe hopefully one thing or two things like recipe wise i can pass down to her um something that my family likes to do is travel together and that's um you know i never really gave much thought to it but i was like i think this is like now that i have my own family you know i recently told my husband i was like yeah like i would love to do like this like regularly with our kids in the future and I'm like telling him all my grand plans and he's just looking at me like okay yeah we could do that <laughs> like but I was like oh this is such an ingrained part of me um growing up that like my parents would take us to trips and take us to like it doesn't even have to be very far but like adventures essentially and like these would be the times where I think a lot of my core childhood memories come from like my happy memories um and we would like you know um like it would be like a family bonding event planning our next trip together you know um, and I never knew that that was like something that was like not, I guess, super common, but I guess it's something that I think my family likes to do. And I think your family is similar too, right? Same. I mean, I feel like, you know, I got asked this question like a couple years ago, what's the biggest gift your family gave to you? And mm. I was like the gift of travel. Aww. I was like, because honestly, like when we were young, my parents loved like, you know, being who they are. They love going to conferences all the time. So yeah. I felt like we were like gypsies. Like we were always like, they would like take us out of school you know, and we would just go to conferences with them, like cross country on road trips everywhere, just follow them. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, as we like got older, you know, we would do a lot of these international trips to this day. 
our family takes like one or two like family trips a year. Mm. And I feel like that's um, been such a big part of my identity as well. And I feel like I've seen so much of the world and just so much culture all around. And I feel like such a better, well-rounded person because of that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's definitely like, you know, something I definitely want to carry forward to mm -hmm. my family as well. But I know exactly how you feel because like Adam, like is the opposite of me. He's a homebody. He doesn't yeah. like to travel. And so even when I told him like, hey, you know, part of my childhood was going to Disneyland once a year, mm -hmm. you know, like the happiest place on earth for imagination, creativity. Yeah. He's like, why? Like, you don't <laughs> even like, you're not going to remember that. Like, what is the real impact? Or when I'm like, w I want us to go on trips and stuff. And he's like, why? Like, we can have a trip like in our own home and like enjoy. And I'm just like, what is wrong with you? Like, don't you want to like expand your mind right. and your world, you know? So that's TBD. We'll have to figure it out. Right, yeah. right. But I totally resonate with you. Yeah. It's like, no, you don't understand. Yeah. Like, this, this is, is good. Yeah, this is like a true. And it's just so important to me. Like, I honestly did not realize how important it was to me. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was something my family did and like, you know, cool. And then when I got married and I started having kids, I was like, no, like, this is actually like something super fundamental to me as an individual. And like, I really value this. And I like, this is like a priority, you know, yeah. that like, I want to pass down to my children and do with my children. Yes. Um, Sam over here is really quiet. I feel like you have some thoughts on this. I, I <laughs> side with Adam here. It's not like, it's, it's not like I didn't travel. Okay. I think same thing, right? Like my parents always went to these conferences too. I remember during third grade at one point they pulled us out of school for a whole month to go live in New Zealand because wow. my parents were considering moving there to like be pastors mm. there and then we ended up moving to Orlando so we went to Disney World all the time <laughs> you know we we also lived in Taiwan for three years mm. so like we've done extensive travel through that sense right we would take all the road trips like up and down the Pacific or like going to Yosemite going to Yellowstone and then different things like that even when we were in Florida we like drive up I think at one point we went up all the way to like North Carolina or like whatever. So we've traveled. I just don't get it. I don't see the value in it. Why? <laughs> I well, okay, like everything has a share. I'm like, I no, it doesn't resonate. So I am very curious because <laughs> no, like okay, even right, Iris, when you were sharing how like this is such a core like value for me. Right. I'm like, what aspect of it? Is it like experiencing something new? Like that's like you get that from travel is it i don't know like that's the only thing i can like even yeah. remotely place yeah like, comprehension towards i think yeah i think that's one of them i think it's experiencing something new together um and yeah like trying like experiencing like first for like all of us together having different reactions to it i liked it i hated it you know kind of thing or we all really liked it or we all really hated it um, I think the other thing is also just like, I think when you travel, at least I feel like it's just like this, like dedicated time of just like, a, like a lot of distractions and interruptions aren't quite there anymore. And so you have like just really good quality time together um, versus like, you know, when you're back at home, there's always things that, you know, come up and you have your life routines that you do. But like when you're traveling, it's almost like, yeah, like it's just like this uninterrupted time of just like having fun together maybe having fun is another thing too it's just like they're just good times yeah i don't know because then it's like for me i felt like we there are other memories that i can point to right mm. let's say like uh me my brother and my dad like you know throwing learning how to throw football around together because mm -hmm. it's like he's never really played with an american football before mm -hmm. or like he like taught us how to like kick a soccer ball and stuff like that but then maybe like when it came to traveling like a lot of times it's like also with other families and then maybe just like my family wasn't mm -hmm. as communicative. So then perhaps if we had new experiences, we weren't like, oh, hey, how did you like that? Or like not like that? Or mm -hmm. what do you think? I mean, I think part of it, too, is just every time we're trying something, I'm like, this looks hella lame. Or like <laughs> if we go sightseeing. Yeah. So my thing with sightseeing is like, all right, we go sightseeing. We like see something. It's cool in the moment. And then the moment I turn around, it's over. And then, oh Sam! No, I'm serious. I'm like, there was. Why did we come all you this didn't way? You even take in the moment. No, I took in. in the moment, and then we turn around, and it's done. And the moment's over. Yeah, the moment's over. So I was like, all right, that was a waste of time. A waste of time. <laughs> oh I'm man. I'm serious. That's just like how I react to it. And like, I get okay, the okay. distraction-free part of life, but that, I think my mentality is more like I'd rather spend the time that I spent on this vacation, like, bettering like my everyday life. Okay. So like, if it's 
oh, hey, we wanted a distraction free environment. And it's like, all right, how do I incorporate this into a normal day life? Like maybe we need to be better at blocking off mm -hmm. this time of the day or like mm -hmm. this time during the week to do that. Mm -hmm. And then with like the experiencing something new, yes, I can see the appeal of it. But then there's also this other part where it's like, am I really spending money to like be this uncomfortable? Like the whole point for me of like getting more wealth and like spending on whatever is to be comfortable. So like, why am I doing this to myself? So traveling itself, like the actual travel is really uncomfortable, like long flights and like not like sleeping in your own bed or like, I think, flights. I think it's like, maybe there's just a lot of it things I don't get to control. So there's a lot of variables out of my hands. I see. Okay. Right. And then I especially hate it if we have to travel longer than we're actually at a destination for. Okay. Right. So like, <laughs> I will never do a like one day Tahoe trip because I think it's the most inefficient use of time. It's like, okay. you, know, you gotta wake up at 4am, drive like four hours. You're super tired. <laughs> okay. Maybe you go s doing snow stuff or like going summer, like doing water stuff. Oh, hey, you got to drive another four hours back. Like, dude, that was <laughs> so dumb. Like, <laughs> just think about it. All right, because then if, if, if I am trying to get eight hours sleep that day, okay, right? if I'm trying to get eight hours sleep that day, so, <laughs> all right, so that's eight hours of the day. Then okay. you have eight hours to travel and then another eight hours to do activities. Yeah. So I'm literally traveling for as much time as I am doing activities. And so, like, for my, like, my, like, <laughs> I don't know, pros and cons, risk reward, like calculations. Right. That is so not worth it. To me. Got it. Yeah. I'm really trying hard to understand That's you That's fine. Here, right? And I'll try hard to understand yeah. you too. But... I'm like, so efficiency is support. And number two, yeah. you're a control freak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I actually feel like that was a therapy session for me because I feel like me and Adam do get into like spouts about this, like not arguments, but you help me see like the other side is mm -hmm. like, you work so hard at like for like why can you not just work on having a better life just on a normal? Because I think he accuses me all the time <laughs> and of uh, always wanting to escape reality <laughs> by like all the vacations that I do. And right. I think to a certain extent, there's a little bit of truth mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I do think that traveling for me is seeking adventure, like satisfying, like endless curiosity, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it's just, it just inspires me. And I feel mm -hmm. like I, I feel like to travel, you have to, it's not like it's about street smarts because it's a different skill set, but you have to be able to maneuver mm -hmm. through different situations uh, when you don't know language, you don't know like the culture there. Yeah. And I think that's also like a life skill. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes <laughs> our first international trip with Adam, I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, like clearly you haven't traveled enough. Okay. <laughs> like. Come on, let's walk faster. Why are you making it right here? Yeah. But okay, but see, like there, like I feel like I navigate all these situations fine. Like right, we just Esther and I just came back from a trip too, and it was for me, it's like it's fine. But then I would like to know, like for you, Francis, like do you feel like there was no way you could have learned said whatever skills you feel like applied in that situation via like stuff you did at home because i'm pretty sure you're just overall like a high caliber person in everything you do anyways oh so, sam no so it's like <laughs> so like you didn't need to be exposed to like this foreign environment to exude like those skills i think it's like it's exciting to me you know it's like there's one year where i went to 11 countries and like half of it i did on my own and so to like have to navigate like not knowing the language like i went to like latvia and estonia which was like very like russian-esque you know so to be able to navigate that like was a challenge and i felt so good to like accomplish that mm -hmm. but i think overall like i think the skills is one part of it but i think it's just the experience you know, that you can't get unless you get out of your house or mm -hmm. out of your comfort zone, yeah. you know, and to be exposed to that. I think mm -hmm. that's kind of what drives my passion for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think, right, <laughs> back again, for me, it's just like, oh, everyone's always like, oh, it's been many experiences. But then for me, yeah, once the moment's over, I'm like, <laughs> what a waste of time and oh money. Oh, my God. Like, sometimes it's like, oh, wasn't that moment so, like, so great? Like, has it been ever been like, oh, like, it's great. So it wasn't a waste of my time because I had a great moment <laughs> or great experience. No. I'm like, I don't think so. now I'm realizing, like, maybe me and Iris, like, romanticize the notion of travel and yeah. you just don't. Yeah. No, and I think that's <laughs> I fine, right? agree to disagree. Right? No, which is fine. Like, I'm not trying to win you two over. It's just, 
No, this we're trying is... to win you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's not happening either. You know? like you have I to know. show me exactly why this is worth it. At least if I buy something a year down the road, I can still see it and touch it. Okay, but didn't you? Okay, when you were in your most recent trip, you yeah. climbed this crazy mountain and hiked. Sure. Did it not feel like amazing and accomplishing and like wow? I'm never like this was like a sight I've never seen, and I may not experience right. this like in so, a while in our home. No, area. so a quarter of the way up, I'm like, Esther, how much more is there? She's like, <laughs> I think we're like halfway up. I'm like. So you're telling me there's still three quarters of the way to go for me to get back to our starting point? Like, what the There's heck? No, 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 no appreciate. Because then the whole time I'm like climbing these steps. Like, okay, so we're like at 7,000 feet above sea level. The air's super thin. I take like 10 steps. But then at the moment, aren't you like, wow, I'm 7,000? No, I'm like, I'm going to fall and die. <laughs> okay, like, why oh am my I gosh. here? Oh so then goodness. I'm climbing up and I was like, holy crap, we still have like halfway to go to get down. And I know going down is even worse than going up because you take one wrong step, you're going to like roll your ankle or like whatever, whatever. <laughs> and then I was like, dude, this is wild. Okay, so yes, the view was like cool, but then I'm also like, if you look out far enough, I'm like, all right, the view is really cool. And then I look down a little bit. I'm like, oh my God, this is real steep. If I just, one bad step to is done. And then, like everything else I want to do in life is just gone. And for what? For this dumb hike? Like, no thanks, dude. No thanks. <laughs> oh my goodness. But seriously, like, okay, so, right. So we make it to the top. I'm like, all right, cool, cool views. All right, let's take a photo of us being here. Cause that's like the most unique thing, right? Because if you really want to see photos, I'm sure, like, everyone else has better photos on, like, Google or whatever. So we'll have, take a photo with, like, us in the frame. And then I'm like, all right. And Esther's, like, enjoying herself. I'm just kind of sitting there. I'm like, how much longer are we staying up here? Like, I just want to get back to our starting point. And I'm just, like, sitting and waiting. And then once we start going down, like, I'm not, I'm just making sure we get down in one piece. And, <laughs> safety first yeah and so we get down i'm like all right cool that was like an hour of my life i'll never get back <laughs> and that's it so i want to poor esther i'm like how like when she came home was she like dude like i can't travel with this guy anymore <laughs> well okay all right if, if i'm like the far extreme of like zero value and experiences like she's close but like not that far maybe she's like i don't know 15 experiences like 85 whatever else mm. but yeah, so we at least bond over that, but I am like super to the extreme. So I think me and Adam need to hang out more at home. Yeah, prob <laughs> probably. Yeah, just find something to do at home. <laughs> <laughs> so what is something that like you and your family have done that you feel like you want? To it's clearly not travel. So <laughs> what is it that you want to bring forth? <laughs> I mean, I don't even really know at this point. I think like because we've gone through so many different iterations of like what family at home looks like, mm -hmm. right? Because even when I was younger, like. When I mentioned, oh, my mom was the one taking me all these classes. Because like, at that point, my dad was in SoCal, like, finishing up his um, his theology school. Seminary, yeah. And then, so then, and then at one point, it's like, oh, okay, my dad is back with us. And then we're all at my grandparents' house. So there's technically six of us. And then there's another iteration where now it's the four of us in Orlando. And then there's another iteration where it's two brothers and my mom. In California for a year. Then there's another iteration where it's us three again, but in mm -hmm. Taiwan. And then finally, one more iteration where it's us two brothers and my dad in California. So it's like there's been so many changes that I don't think we've ever truly been able to set up like an annual thing that we do. Because mm -hmm. like, even when you guys are talking about celebrating Chinese New Year, I'm like, I don't really remember actively celebrating Chinese New Year until I was in college. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, it's like, oh, hey, Sam, come back. We're going to do, like, a big family gathering with, like, all the cousins that are in the Bay and the aunts and uncles, and then we're going to, like, do Chinese New Year. And, oh, hey, you don't need to give money yet because you're still in school. And then, like, a few years later, oh, hey, you're married, so now you need to start giving me money. It's like, what? Like, I never got money when I was younger. <laughs> like, I never well, bring a net loss here. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <not worth> it. <laughs> but, yeah, so in terms of that, I don't think, for me, there's anything to do i think yeah there's probably different things in terms of i want to expose whatever kids i have down the road to like as much as possible and then hopefully <laughs> i am more observant than my parents were and i can figure out like when the kid is sick of whatever activity yeah. they're doing but we'll see yeah what about you? <laughs> i'm i'm a huge traditions person and so i uh 
I am the person that's like every Christmas we have to have a real Christmas tree. That's something I had growing up. My parents like talked me out of like, they're like, let's just buy a fake one, please. Like we don't want to haul back a, a real one anymore. I'm like, no, it has to be real, you know, until this day, like now it's my husband's job to haul back the Christmas tree. And like, now I'm like, no, we got to go cut down a Christmas oh, tree, you know, God. like, and so I'm like that mom, you know, um, I love, I love traditions. Like, um, you know, we have to do family dinners. Like, you know, growing up, we actually did family dinners every Sunday, like with my extended families and my cousins. And like my brother and I were just joking about how we, how much we actually miss that now because it's just so hard to get everybody's schedules, you know. But we used to like watch The Simpsons together. My brother and I like did not understand what was going on. But like my older cousins would watch The Simpsons and we would just sit there watching The Simpsons, you know. Um, and so a lot of these types of traditions, like I think we kind of did growing up. Actually, I think we did fairly well, you know? And so, and I don't know, it meant a lot to me. And I think, especially now that I don't have as many of these because, you know, everybody's spread out, I really miss it. Um, and it was really core to, I think, who I am. And so I'm a, I'm a huge traditions person. And I think that's something that I will continue to pass down to my children. They'll probably resent me for it, but <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to be doing all these weird things and I'm going to make them do them every year, you know? I mean, I think that's big. Cause I, Right. So because we didn't do like really anything for Christmas when Esther and I first got married, there was mm -hmm. nothing. She'd be like, oh, yeah, my family does Christmas. And I'm like, OK, I don't know what that means, whatever. <laughs> but then, yeah, so like they'll actually get together and like everyone has at least one present from the group mm. or like there's like individual presents and stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's like kind of nice. <laughs> and I'm like, eh, OK, whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fine. But then, yeah, so then, like one thing we'll do now is we'll like buy an ornament mm. for ourselves like per year that we feel like represents oh, that's cute. the year yeah so then like i guess this is like the start of our tradition to like pass down and stuff i love oh, that that's great yeah what about you francis um i think uh unfortunately travel is one of the things i do <laughs> want to bring forward um i think you know similarly to iris's family i think it's it's not necessarily traditions for me but it's the things that brings people together because mm. i think being close as a family is something that's really important to me so whatever i need to do to cultivate that with my own family in the future i want to do mm. like even stupid things right like Thanksgiving, like it was a tradition of always like eating and then going outlet shopping. Or if there's a new mm. Bond movie on, on Christmas, <laughs> we're watching the Bond movie together, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Just like these little things that may be inconsequential, but it brings you together right. and something you look forward to. And I think, you know, um, going back to what we were talking about earlier, I do want to be, gosh, I feel like I'm really scary and like, I'm borderline going to be a crazy tiger mom, but I do want my kids to experience like everything that they possibly can. Yeah. Uh, but I think also with what Sam was saying, like, I also need to be able to recognize mm -hmm. when they actually don't like something and be careful not to push them. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do think that those are the things that I, I do want to carry forward. Yeah.